Um, in this in this video we're going to take a look at object diagrams and in general just UML and class and object diagrams. So uh, we've already seen um, use case and use case body diagrams for UML and now we're going to take a look at some more specific types of programs specific for um, more specific types of diagrams particularly for designing object oriented programming. And a good first question to ask is why are we bothering doing this and really it comes down to two main points so the first is that having this shared technical language between people who program in different languages think in different ways business analyst groups uh, they aid in communication because we all know at the end of the day we're talking about the same kind of thing it allows, uh, allows, it allows us to plan and create together before we get lost in all the technical details of writing code and specific programming languages the nice thing about it and the reason it was designed is that a good language will also help you think and lay out your problem in a logical way to ensure you don't miss anything, don't miss any magic connections or behavior, again, before you ever start writing any code. So in order to introduce this, I want to introduce um, these, these three bits of terminology that are common between all languages. So all languages, whether they're programming languages or human spoken languages, have these three, three components, ontology, syntax, and semantics. And the ontology is the important concepts that you need to know. So for example, the ontology of a, of a programming language would probably be the concept of something simple like a for loop or a variable. Now other kinds of programming languages, fun functional programming language, language Languages, for example, some of them do not have for loops, some of them do not have variables, but they are still programming languages. Um, so <clears throat> the syntax is then how do you do things around that ontology. So syntax of spoken languages, things like grammar rules and spelling. And then semantics tells us how to interpret what has been written down in terms of the syntax to show us the ontology. So an example that we've already seen is a finite state machine, which you can see on the right hand side. The ontology of that would be that there are states and we have transitions between those states, that there are some conditions for those tra state transitions to occur, that on the transitions actions happen for a merely finite state machine at any rate, and that we can only ever be in one state at a time. The syntax is then, how do we draw that on a bit of paper? How do we draw that diagrammatically? Well, we use um, blue circles with the labels for the states, and then we use arrows for the transitions, and we use red uh, to show the actions that happen on those transitions. The semantics is then, how do we take what I've got written down there and interpret it as behavior of a system or turn it into code? Um, and the reason that we need to do this is that for a lot of you, your instinct will be as soon as you get a task to sit down and just start programming and for a lot of the stuff you'll do in first year that is a completely valid approach but as you start dealing with bigger and bigger problems and bigger and bigger code bases and different languages that approach will become less and less and less effective and we've talked about that a bunch in 110 for these different modeling approaches um, one of the reasons that we have them is to sit down and plan can actually save us a lot of agony in the long run and the reason that we need to start dealing with this is that real world problems are complex. They're not simplified mathematical equations. They're not simplified physical descriptions of a system. Uh, if you are building, for example, the software to control an airplane or an engineering model of the airplane itself, you can't ignore any of the complexity like we do for a lot of our stuff in Engineering 110. And the way that we deal with that problem as engineers is modularity. And it's very simple. It essentially says this problem is too big for a single person. So what we do is we break our task, whatever we have to do, into chunks. Um, we make those chunks as independent as possible. We can then ask different people or groups of people to build those chunks. And then our final job is to assemble them all together. We divide and conquer to solve this problem. That is our core solution for these hugely complicated real world problems problems. Um, Object-oriented programming is one such example. We use the objects and classes to modularize our system. And so given any particular programming task, our first question needs to be what classes and objects will we use to make up our system? Um, what are the attributes of the objects? And then how are they related and what do they do? So our general strategy will be to to find the ontology of our problem. So what objects do we need? What are the attributes of those objects? What relationships do they have? How do they behave? And how can we group them all together? 
and we're going to start out by identifying those objects and so uh, in the next video we're going to go through a simple example using this game called Frogger um, and make an object diagram of that.